Bro, I'm still waiting for you to tell us what, what happened with L.A. Why was L.A. trash? I could tell you why. <laughs> for me, what L.A. feels like is everybody in L.A. is pansexual because, or they are, they're ready to fuck for a come up. That's L.A. Yeah. They're, or they're really deeply on drugs. Like you really have this drug screening. I, when you're on apps, I can't when I was single. Oh, the screenings you have to do on the apps, you really have to screen for drugs. I screen for drugs in New York, but in LA, you really have to screen for drugs in a different way. So a lot of the trans attractive guys in LA are really on meth, are really doing drugs in a way that like, they are in other schools in LA, it's bad. And then there is the come up set. Like they will, they will have sex with men. They will have sex with women. They have sex with anybody who can get them to the next level. Right. Just, the levels of bullshit in LA around dating are really gross. It's just really, it's a lot. And here's the thing, like that that whole meth thing, it's becoming big in the black gay culture too. It's not just white gay men. Oh yeah. The black gays are really getting on that meth. Well, the trade years ago, the, the guys who were into trans women, it gagged me because I thought it was a gay man th male thing. But the girls, there are trans women who are getting the um, the chasers, the trade who had sex with trans women. The girls are getting the trade into it. I was I met this guy on Long Island Railroad years ago, and I was feeling I was feeling kind. I was feeling I can say kind here. I was feeling kind. I was like on the Long Island Railroad. Like this guy gives me his ask for my number. He knew the T, and then he were texting. He was like, "Are you into Tina?" This was years ago. This is two thousand. He was like, "Are you into Tina?" I had no idea what he meant. You mean was, Turner? <laughs> <laughs> As in Turner? What's love got to do with it? I was. I literally. I had no idea, and so I literally texted a friend. I was like, "This guy's asking me if I'm into Tina." She's like, "Girl, Crystal," and I was like, "The trade is doing to Crystal now too, girl." I was like. The girls well, listen, are getting straight into their crystal, though. You, you took us back to New York. <laughs> Before we go deep, Laverne, Mo, you said- Yeah, because I'm ready to go deep. They, you yeah, said, Laverne, do you have maybe like some uh, earbuds or something you can put it? Because people in the uh, comments are saying that there's an echo on your side. So I, think, I do. Yeah, so I think Laverne, that they're hearing, the, uh, they're hearing yeah. your speaker. Okay, give me a second. I have this something. I love her gloves, honey. She can't listen. She was working earlier. And she said, "Bitch, I got to slide through." This is my. I got to slide. She was, you know. She was. She was working, honey. She said, "Bitch, I got to slide through and get the girl. I need to come through because, bitch, the fan I, taught me." We be. Kidding. I love you, Maddie, so much. I, I know. I love you too. Listen, what y'all don't know? One night, and I it ain't. I'm only gonna say the surface. One night, I mean, well, after the Beyonce thing, me and Laverne hung out in L.A. Right, was it was LA. We hung it was out LA, in LA. Yeah. We was out in LA. We was out all night, mm. bitch. We was out all night, like with we Miss had Mary. Such a, with Miss Mary, we had such a very, very, very good night. Like it was a really good night. It, it was, was. It was epic. It, it was epic. Nice. It was I a good night. If you have the pleasure of experiencing Maddie, you Maddie is Maddie all the time. <laughs> Wait, I, <laughs> she's Maddie all the time. If you have the pleasure of experiencing her interact with a, a server or with just it, like random fans, there is it's it's a southern charm. There's a way she flirts. There's a way she asks a question. It it's such a key, bitch. You are a key key. I live. For you, it, I, I, listen. I we had such a good night. I mean, the night was so. Yeah. It, it what the night was so good because, you know, we, it was Beyonce, and then we left Beyonce and we just went to eat. We were we were we were in black cars, riding around, honey. You know, we was with the you know the the guys and all that type of shit. It was just a, it was a it was a good night. And one thing I'm gonna always be is myself. And shit, Laverne herself. I'm going. Oh, what I did learn about Laverne that night was I learned that Laverne is very much so. Laverne, you are you are television through and through, bitch. Ain't ain't no ain't no question about it. Laverne <laughs> TV through and through. What does that mean? Was very what does so, that mean? The, the people came up there for her fans, and the fans came up there to see her. 
I was like, girl, she finna hit them with a she hit them with a Whitney Houston. I'm eating. <laughs> I mean, it's like great. You remember off the off of Bobby and Whitney show? She said, I'm eating. Girl, I wanted to fall out and scream. <laughs> Is that what you said, Laverne? I'm, I'm sure I did. I was, I mean, like, <laughs> you want a photo of me with the food like hanging out of my mouth? Can I, like, I, I, I mean, eating? like, I, it's, I, I, I'm very into when I'm with my friends or when I'm hanging out, I want to be with the people I'm with. And for me, when I start taking photos, and I think it's because I've done a lot of meet and greets and a lot of whatever, when I start taking photos with strangers or fans, it feels like I'm working. So, yeah. And I Girl. work a lot. I work all the time. And if I'm yeah. at an event and my I'm on, it's like okay, like do the thing. And if I'm in the right mood, sometimes you get to me in the right mood, and it's just beautiful. And the fan love, and everybody was lovely who came up. But like when I'm with my friends, I want to be with my friends, and I want to like be with you, you know. And I don't want to feel like I'm working. But I girl, it was so funny. Work Great. all the time. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm eating. You want to take a picture of me with my food in my mouth? And I sit there and look. I wanted to scream. Because you know me, I'm very much so like, ah, ah, I'm, I'm, that's me. And Laverne's like, I'm eating. Girl, I could have crazy. I used to be that way. I used to be that way in the beginning. And then Orange, in, on 2013 and 2014, Orange is New Black was, got, apparently was really popular. Because I couldn't walk down the street, girl. There was a minute with Or when Orange was really popular all over the world. Where it got a little, it got crazy and it got scary. People were running up on me in New York, like literally running up on me. I'm like, do you understand? I'm a black trans. People have been running up on me my whole life. You can't be running up on me on 14th Street. And that's traumatizing. So it got, so there was a little residual trauma. I'm very like, before I was famous, I only talked to strangers if they were cute guys. <laughs> I oh let's go. We're 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 here Elitist. in the morning. Elitist. When I was single, or like sometimes I remember when I went to Miami for the first time, I met these really cute girls who I mean I'm not into girls, but we ended up talking. We hung out the whole week. I went to Miami for the first time in 2009 by myself on vacation, hung out with these girls all week. I wasn't that was before Orange is the New Black, though. And like I I think I was it's just like I'm very protective of myself. And I guess I'm not always clear about what people's motives are and why people, I want, I, the love is beautiful and people and fans loving the work, but I'm, I'm just really protective of myself. And I have a lot of trauma and just like people, crowds freak me out. People surrounding me freaks me out. It's just, it is what it is. So I have to be generally careful where I go. And in the beginning, I have to say, I got a really bad reputation from a lot of my fans who were pissed. And so then what happened is I stopped going to a lot of places. I stopped, there were a lot of places. Actually, I realized I was at a night, I remember I was at a nightclub with the boyfriend at the time. And this girl wanted, it was, I was on, this was Saturday night and I was at a club with my boyfriend, just wanted to have fun with my boyfriend. She asked for a picture, she was drunk. And then she called, she tried to cause a scene. I realized then too, this girl wanted to try to get me in something so she could sue me. Oh. In my mind. You, so you have to start, re I had to change where I started, where I hung out. I was like, this girl is trying to like, girl, you, you, you've been around, you know, the girls who are trying to, you know, trying to get that lawsuit, trying to get you to hit them or swing or whatever, so they can sue you. So you, I just have to, now I just, I, a lot of, I don't go a lot of places. There are a lot of places I don't go now. And so I'm kind of a homebody unless I'm, I'm ready to receive the energy and the love. And I, I really, What's been beautiful post pandemic, and the, there was a few years with Orange when it was just crazy. Now that that's calmed down a little bit, when people come up to me now, I'm much more, I'm able to be more grateful. I'm able to be happier. I'm hanging out with my friends, you know. I am very grateful, but it's less like, because it's not happening all the time. Anyway. Well, girl, we got to tie this into fag talk. Girl, I want to know what you think about what's going on with Diddy. Oh, it's so oh. funny. I was so oh, I was watching because, so I, because remember you when you I came was on up, yes I was on the reality show I don't work for Diddy it's so funny because I watched this um YouTube channel called Make It Make Sense Mims mm -hmm. I don't know if you know him I guess that's his name and he was like Laverne was on that work for Diddy show I wonder what she thinks I wonder if anything happened with Diddy nothing ever happened with me and Diddy I met Diddy like 
I, on the reality show, he literally, when I was on the show, he literally interacted with the contestants. I was on Island Work for Diddy season one, 2008, for the people who don't know. He interacted with the contestants when I was on the show once. He filed us into his LA home, gave a one minute speech and filed us out. And then I literally had, um, we had a conference call after the show was over about press. And then I literally didn't see him again in public, in person, even though I went to a Diddy party I did go to, I was at a yeah, Diddy party. Well, well, just, know no. that, just know that there are yeah. cameras in every room of those houses. But, so no, but it wasn't in his so, 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 so if you so, went to the restroom, there's video footage of you somewhere. It, I didn't. Even before, yeah, really so cool. even before I don't work for Diddy, I always had connections in New York City. So I found myself at Diddy parties for years I'm at Marquis, but never, the, at his house for the first time, I never went to any of the Hamptons parties, but he had different parties in the city. Marquee one time, I remember with Zach Posey, it was fat, Men's Fashion Week and another Diddy party I had gone to because I, I knew, you know, you know people and you end up at a Diddy party. But yeah. the one at Star Island, I was in Miami for New Year's Eve one year and one he had a party at Star Island and um, Andre Harrell saw me at Soho House and he remembered me from I Want to Work for Diddy, may he rest in peace. He invited me to Diddy's party. And then Derek, who's um, Diddy's stylist, was at the door. I go- Farnsworth Bentley. I'm sorry, what? Derek, Derek Roach. Derek Farnsworth Bentley? No, no, no. Derek uh, Roach. Oh, okay. um, who's, who, I don't know if Derek is still with him. Anyway, he remembered me. I went in. Jesse was, it was a, the party was cute, but it was in his yard. So he had porta potties and then the party was in his yard. I did not go into his house. <laughs> I didn't see him. No, I'm saying this is just the truth. I'm just, this is the truth. Yeah. I'm not- we're clearing it up now. The party was in his yard, beautiful yard. Everybody was there. It was New Year's Eve. Um, he came through the party at one point, like with security around him. He danced up through the dance floor and then like leaves. And the DJ was, the music was popping. It was, it was a vibe. It was, Diddy's parties are amazing. I didn't go into the house. I don't know what was going on in there. I didn't even do the porta potty because I just was like, I did my, I, I danced, I kikied. And I left. So, mm. and then I met, and then I, so I didn't even talk to Diddy that night at his party, I, cause you could be at Diddy's party and not talk to him. And then the time I literally saw Diddy after I don't work for Diddy was in, it was iHeartRadio. I, it had to be, I was with my boyfriend at the time who was a huge um, admirer of Diddy. And we, I was backstage at the iHeartRadio um, Awards and saw Diddy, we met, and he was like, I'm so proud of you, blah, blah, blah. He actually gave me his number. He was like, she should come to some of the parties. He never invited me to a party. He never texted, and I didn't feel like I should be texting Diddy. You he know, didn't invite you to a party because he's into men. Oh! He's, in, he's into men. So but like, you okay, I, the sense I get is that Diddy's into everything. Um, right. From the, from the reports, from what has been reported, allegedly, it seems that Diddy, see, I think that like, <laughs> of all the things, so let's break it down. I think of all the things that people are talking about and Diddy's been accused of, he hasn't been charged with anything yet. Long-winded. <laughs> yes, I'm long-winded at AF, so work with me. Yes, I'm long-winded. Anyway, um, he, I think, like, of all the things he's been accused of and he hasn't been charged with anything yet, people focus on the, the alleged male on male stuff Mm -hmm. And and they don't focus on the alleged sexual assault stuff. And I think that's because actually Olay, o Olayami um, did a great podcast on this yesterday with o Olay and friends. And she said that in the black community often, not her, but uh, her panelists, that often in the black community, a man can rape somebody, they can do all kinds of horrible things, but if they're a billionaire or if they're really rich, it's like, you can't bring this black man down. Cause right. then they can it's still, yeah. you know, have a, I can be this, but the second he's maybe gay, then that's the issue, that becomes the issue. Because so we see like, them as our hero and it's just like, we can't take down one of our guys that yeah. accomplished something that really yeah. did. Oh, so, I mean, it's really, I think, well, at this point, he has not been convicted of anything. We yeah. know their court <laughs> documents. What I love about Mims, what I love about Mims, make it make sense for all, he's a YouTuber. He gets the court record. So he gets the um, cases and he reads directly from the court documents. So we get, you know, he does the work for us. Um so I, yeah, so it's, he's been accused of a lot of things. He's fighting some of them. He's settled with Cassie. It's all really unfortunate. And 
what it's really sad if there are these many people who have been victimized by him. Um, there have been rumors for years about him doing various things. That's what I was going to ask you. Had you ever heard like rumors over the years? Because oh, yeah. I've heard rumors. Oh, yes. But I, the first, so the first time, the first time I, so in 2008, right after I did I'm Gonna Work For Diddy, I did my first HBO show, Bored To Death, and I was on the pilot. And I, someone in the crew, I want, cause like you could probably Google who, who the person was. So uh, <laughs> trying to like be discreet. Someone in the crew was like, oh, you just did I Wanna Work For Diddy. She was, the, the, she used to work for Diddy. And allegedly, this was 2008. She said she walked in on Diddy. She described, uh, allegedly, <laughs> she described something that Jaguar Wright described. That, oh. Remember the Jaguar Wright story where she said she walked in did you do yeah. the story? This woman in 2008 described the same thing. I told a story right here in 2007 when I did my stage play here in Atlanta. Someone that was working with me on the stage play was invited to the Swiss Hotel. This is when the Swiss Hotel existed right there in the same parking lot with uh, Lenox Mall. And he came into the, to the hotel room. Diddy was on the couch with one or two other guys. They were all in bathrobes and he saw two or three guys go from the bedroom to the bathroom and then back. And they were also in bathrobes. And Diddy said to my friend, come on in, join the party. My friend is a heterosexual man. And he said, come on in, join the party. He said, oh, no, I'm good. And he left. That was in 2007. 